Hi everybody, welcome back to Daisy. Well, welcome back to Daisy modding, XML modding for console and PC. And this is another video that goes out to Roy or anybody else who's been having trouble with this video that I put out a good couple of years ago, how to easily edit types of XML using the Daisy Loot Edit program. Um, and I haven't used this program for quite a while. So in this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to download it. Um, I'll show you how to get it to um, open up your files and then we're, we're going to do a little bit of editing as well with a little bit of um, uh, with a bit of caveats about why you've got to be careful with things like this so in the description below this video you will find a link to the daisy loot loot edit program also you will find a link to bohemia interactives daisy central economy github through which if you click on the code button and download the zip you will then have all of the vanilla server mission files because when you start to use something like this you probably want to work on a copy don't work on your original files so you can mess around on your local pc with this without messing up your server files and then when you're ready upload them to the uh, to your server i'll also put a link not to that <laughs> but to my um uh, how to start modding Daisy servers um, playlist as well and also I'll put a link to my github repository um, because if you're just starting off on this and you're thinking right I've got my Daisy server and I really want to have a nice boosted loot server for me and my mates to play on so that you know we can find things easily one of the simplest way to do it is not to try and do it yourself but just go over to my github repository and choose for example my daisy churnerous boosted loot or livonia boosted boot or if you fancy something harder my churnerous churnerous hardcore um option and then if you go into these um, and uh, download them and have a look at the readme they're very easy to install over the top of a, a vanilla install on your server restart it and you'll have a boosted loot server and uh, I, you know all the instructions are there so if you're thinking that's what i want and i want to do it quickly honestly they're, they're they're pretty good these files lots of people use them there's not too many errors in them and um, they should be okay so okay so back to the uh, loot edit so as you can see so you click on there and that will take you through to, to the github and you'll see it says download here so we click on download and then we we come to here and it says asset so we click here and then we've got daisy loot edit zip so we click that and that will then download as you can see it's downloading here so we're going to uh, show it in the folder so there it is so i'm just going to right click and i'm going to cut that out and then i'm going to go to my um, daisy modding folder i have all my daisy modding stuff and i'm just going to go to the bottom and i'm just going to paste this in in fact it's probably going to appear there it is and i'm just going to extract it here so right right click extract here if you haven't got the extract here option or anything you need to do a google search for winrar download the free version of winrar install it and then you'll get that so we say extract here and it's probably appeared at the top now is it daisy loot edit there we go so that's the little program the little app that we're going to use if we double click on that it opens up into this screen here so we can maximize it um obviously there's not much here so what we need to do now is we need to press load and we need to find where our files are so this is where you would have previously downloaded those files from bohemian interactive github or downloaded them from your server um, mine are in uh, common and i've got where we got daisy server and we're going to go to the missions folder and we're going to go to churnerous and then we're going to go into db and we're going to have a look at the types file because this is the most common one you want to edit isn't it this is the one that has the loot <laughs> that we want to increase but i think this this app is specifically for editing types so we say open and it will load it all in and um you'll have a load of stuff now i've got a load of modded stuff here that we probably don't want um there we go so we've got various um names down here it's in alphabetical order so that can make it a little bit um weird to edit it and then we've got categories nominals lifetimes and all that sort of stuff so what you can do is you can click on this stuff and reorder things in um, alphabetical order up or down um, you can order stuff in terms of categories as well um, so you can find the things you want so let's say we want to 
let's start with food, say. So let's scroll all the way down. So food, food's always a good one, isn't it? Because you often think, hmm, you know, I want to increase the amount of food that spawns in on my server. So what this what this program basically does, it's taken the types.xml file, which you can see here, and put it into a, almost like a spreadsheet format so it's easier for you to edit it. There is nothing wrong with editing your types.xml in a text editor. Recommend Notepad++ because it makes it all colorful like this, and just going through it slowly but surely. Um, in fact, going through it like this a bit at a time is how I do it now. I don't bother with any other editor. I literally go through with a cup of coffee um, and uh, some snacks, and I'm just scrolling through and I'm seeing right, what do I want to um, what do I want to change? And yeah, sure, it takes me a few hours, but um, you know I can be very happy after that that everything's working. Um, also, while I'm here, I should mention that you really, really, really want to use, and I'll put a link in the description below the video as well, to use a XML validator. So when we finished, or when you finished, and you've saved your file, before you put it on your server, validate it online with an XML validator to make sure you haven't made any mistakes. This doesn't mean it will definitely work, but it means you'll pick up the, the sort of really, really common things. So within Loot Edit, we're gonna look at Tactical Bacon, aren't we? So let's actually look go to the types of the XML, Let's do Control F and let's actually find bacon, so we can look at the the entry and see kind of kind of what it means. Now you probably have to blow this up full screen to kind of understand. So in your types the XML, there's all these entries, and what they do is they tell your server what items should spawn or not on the server, and how many should spawn, um, and what sort of object it is. So let's take the tactical bacon can. So this is a can of bacon. If anybody fancies sending me some of these from the States to the UK, send me an email, scalesbridge.gmail.com, because we don't have this in the UK. So I used to think it was like spam, but it's not. It's actually pieces of bacon in wax paper wrapped up and put in a can. How yummy does that sound? Anyway, so the nominal is 10. So on the server, there should be round and around about 10 tins of tactical bacon. The minimum is five. So what the minimum is, is it says to the server, look, when they get down to five, you know, start respawning them in again. Quant min and quant max. Now these are used in certain items to delineate how much stuff they have in them. So for example, in a magazine for a gun, that will go between say 20 and 90 or something like that. So it say, say have it between 20 and 90% full of bullets. Or in a canteen, for example, that will have it between you know, 50 and 70. So it's saying have between 50 and 70% worth of uh, water in it. Petrol cans are the same, uh, jerry cans are the same. Now you think, that, well, that doesn't that apply to things like t tinned food and canned food and drinks? It doesn't. They're either full or they're not. The only time they become partially full, sorry, just not my microphone there, is when you're eating them actually in the game. The cost is 100. This is to do with uh, whether the, the server should spawn them in, but I think everything's 100 now. And then we have the flags. So these are very important here. So these are telling the server how it should count this particular item and also something else as well. So what we can see here is that the, we're, we're telling the server just to count these tactical, baker can, uh, tactical bacon cans if it sees them on the map. So if it's just sitting there, count that as one. Uh, one means yes. But what we can see is here is count in player is zero count in cargo is zero, count in hoarder is zero. So that means that if someone has one in their backpack or in their hand, we're saying to the server, don't count that, spawn another one in. Um, it's very important that if anything has a nominal value, that there must be a one <laughs> in count in map normally. Because if there isn't, and you've got everything else, at, everything at zero, what will generally happen is that item will keep spawning and spawning and spawning and it will fill up your your map that happened to me once with um uh, daisy added some new flags um and i had a nominal of 10 i think of them and uh, all of this was zero so so it was basically saying don't bother counting any just keep spawning them and that's what happened my players were coming to me saying why are all these maps everywhere? why are all these flags everywhere and i was like what are you talking about went back and discovered so be very careful with that make sure that counting map is always one and then if you want to you can have counting player there 
counting hoarder, so it's in somebody's boxes and counting cargo. I think that's when it's in somebody's backpack. Now, the other two entries um, cr are crafted and dynamic event loot as well. So what this means is, so if something is crafted, it won't have a nominal. So the nominal will be zero and the minimum will be zero. And it means this thing is made. So, for example, if we go underneath, the tactical bacon can opened, we can see that has a nominal of zero, minimum of zero, and the crafted is one. Because you craft the tactical bacon can opened when you open the tactical bacon can. So it changes from a tactical bacon can to a tactical bacon can opened. Um, probably a better example of that would be something like when you make a uh, fire drill. You know the, the stick with a piece of bark? Again, that will, ha that will be here somewhere. And it will say nominal zero, minimum zero, um, counting map, all that will be zero, but it will be crafted equals one. So the game knows, all right, this is an item, um, but it is a crafted item that's made by doing something in the game. Now, dynamic event loot, what this means is that this item should only spawn within a dynamic event. And a dynamic event on a DAISY server is something like a helicopter crash or a railway, uh, a a, when you find those trains, um, the, not the normal ones, but the ones that kind of just appear and they have lots of zombies around them. Um, there's the military convoys, they're dynamic events as well, um, and the police convoys or the police situations where you've got a number of vehicles, they're dynamic events. So certain things will only spawn in dynamic events. It tends to be higher tier stuff will spawn there. Now underneath we then have the category, the tag, and the usage. So the category, you know, what it is, so this is, this is food. Um, tag is shelves, so that's where it should spawn, and the usage name is military. So that means it's the tactical bacon can um, should spawn in military locations, um, and and it's food. Now, what you'll also find as well is sometimes you will have tier items as well. Here we go. So if we take tactical goggles, these have got tier values. So the way this works is that on the Chernus map, for example, where you spawn at the coast is I think that's tier one. And you go in a little bit, it's tier two. And tier three is towards the northwest. And tier four is like Tizzy Military Base, um, parts of the Northwest Airfield, and, and, and the high end loot. So the idea with this is that you can specify the items, although it might be a military item, it will only spawn in the higher tier military items towards the northwest of the map on Chernus or towards the south on Livonia. So that's kind of the basics of what all these things mean. So now if we jump back into our DAISY loot editor, we can see all this stuff. So if we go along, we can say nominal. Now, it's very important to remember that this is not a full proof little app. It's, it's helpful, but there could be situations where we do things that are wrong. So for example, if we adjust the nominal value here, say we wanted more baking cans, so we put 20 in. What we want to remember is we want to increase the minimum as well to say 15. And you don't want the minimum to go above the nominal either. Lifetime, that's just how long something hangs around on the server before it kind of disappears and respawns. Um, we'll ignore restock, min, quant min, one max, cost is the same. And we can say it's counting map. We could say actually tactical bacon can is a very important thing. I want to make sure it's counted in hoarder. So that would make it a little bit... Um, um, rarer as well um, and then we can come across and we can see it's military and you could edit the you can edit usage as well but again make sure you get your spelling correct because you don't want that so as you can see we've edited that so what we can do is we hit save now and then I go back to this file here what should happen is if we shut this down and then we reopen it uh, edit with Notepad++, plus plus, and then find the bacon. We should find it's gone up to 20. As you can see, there it is. It's gone up to 20. And it works very well like that. Um, and that is, in essence, how you use the DAISY Loot Editor. Just go through, sort things into the uh, order you want them in. You can go through and you can change stuff. Um, I probably, oh, is it worth bothering? I don't know whether I'd use this percentage stuff because there's too much chance that you would make an error and, and change something that shouldn't be changed. Um, but it's a great way just to go through and see 
you know, adjusting things fairly simply. Just just be careful. Other rules of um, thumb as well is don't go mad. You don't want to be t having 10 times more of something. So a classic one for that is the guns, isn't it? So let's scroll down to weapons. There we go, weapons. So people will go, okay, um, the AKM uh, or the AK-74. Well, there's meant to be eight on a server. Tell you what, I'm going to put 80 on the server. <laughs> don't do stuff like that. You know, increase it to 16 or maybe 20, and then remember to increase the min. Um and increase some of the other guns as well. And a really good thing to do is, if you do increase something like the AK up to 16, maybe decrease something else on the server as well. So look at the clothes and think which clothes do, do you, don't you really need and take some of that away. But don't go mad. Don't have like 400 M4A ones um, and, and things like that as you, as you go through it all. Um, because with DayZ, in its vanilla state, it is quite well balanced in terms of survival, and it's not that difficult to be honest. Once you know the game, you know, once you've played it for for a couple of weeks, it's actually fairly easy to survive on a vanilla server, especially if it's your own vanilla server and there's not other people running around shooting you or, or, or getting everything. If it's just you and a few mates on, it's pretty easy to survive. Um, and so you don't need to add that much to actually make it really easy to survive and really easy to find weapons as well. Um, less is more and in fact what I found is the more I play DayZ the less loot I want on my servers I want it to be harder to survive um, that way so anyway so just remember save it up um, re-upload that to your server or to your local server restart your server and things will slowly start to, to change do also remember actually one thing I should uh, mention as well is that when you do make changes to a server say you're making things um, less loot stuff does hang around for quite a while before it will um, disappear that's to do with all these lifetime values don't bother messing around with them and changing them just just let stuff naturally disappear and then let stuff naturally come back as well um, and there we go so hopefully Roy and everybody else you found this video useful um, hopefully I have a kind of explained how this works how to download it how to fire up how to load up the files and how to save and um, you'll get on with enjoying editing the loot on your daisy community server if you have hit like if you want to see more of the same press subscribe and of course I'll see you again soon